Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little bit since I last uploaded a video, and that was because there was some out-of-state family visiting, and so filming a video was a little bit difficult that this past week. So with that said though, I definitely want to start off this video by saying a little bit of like a PSA. Um, and I'm probably going to say this for the beginning of all my videos moving forward, and that is if you do not like what I say, how I say it, or why I'm saying it, then please do click off this video and go about the rest of your day in peace. I've just recently noticed that there was a little bit of an influx of some more low vibrational comments, some more negative comments on my videos, and that is just not what the community that I want to build here on my channel is about. So if for any reason that you don't like this video, it doesn't resonate or whatever, then do not feel the need to have to comment and let me know and just go about the rest of your day and find a video that you would prefer and that resonates more with you. Um, that is to say that I definitely do welcome any sort of constructive criticism and constructive comments as well as just generally positive comments. Um, just understand and make sure that you yourself, the commenter, understand what the difference is between a constructive criticism and what is not constructive criticism moving forward. So again, if you're somebody who for some reason finds my video and wants to leave a negative sort of comment, please know that it will more than likely be deleted and possibly lead to you being blocked from my channel because that is not the kind of energy we want to bring here on this channel and yeah there's just there's so many more things to watch if you don't like something that I do or something that I say then go find a video that you would rather prefer to watch I mean there's billions of videos here on YouTube so yes with that said let's go ahead and clear that out we're releasing that from this channel keeping it at bay um which actually leads into what the topic of this video is for today and so this is going to be a little pick a card reading about messages for this coming full moon which will be in sagittarius it's going to be happening on the 17th if you're not aware and so the topic that i sort of wanted to go with this pick a card for this sagittarius full moon is about you know areas in which we can heal ourselves you know remove blockages in order to bring about um, our goals, you know, our manifestations to get that, whatever it may be blocking that from happening and clear that out, heal things that need to be healed and bring about, you know, some better positivity by releasing what is no longer needed because that is what definitely the full moon is really a good time for because it heightens emotions, things become a little bit clearer in the light of the moon. And so especially with this Sagittarius full moon, it has a little bit of that emphasis on um, what is it that we want to bring into our life? What are our goals? Having a clear intention for that. And so I feel like a good way to sort of get that clear intention is to find out what it is that could be blocking that area and what may need to be healed. So yes, that is what this pick a card is about. And of course, if you find this video and this these messages at a later time when it's not you know this Sagittarius full moon then you know feel free to continue and watch and read what the messages are that you feel called to because there is a reason why you're being called to it at that moment and so in a way this is can be seen as a timeless reading so yes now let's introduce of course the three groups that we have for this reading we have group one with the little crystal ball here we have group two with the moon rainbow moonstone pendulum and then we have group three with the little moon wolf pendant here so definitely take a breath connect with your higher guides your higher self your angels whatever it may be and really let your intuition call you to the pile that has the appropriate message for you so yes, let's go ahead and dive All right, into this. For those who picked group one with the little uh, crystal ball here, let's go ahead and look at what your cards are. So we have the five of swords, we have the sun card, then we have blue moon, the unexpected card 43, 
And then we have card 12 here, Reaching for Sunset. And then we have card 23, Patience. So starting off, I definitely feel like there was some sort of situation here recently where you guys who picked this group may have had some sort of disagreement or a separation with somebody, whether that's a family member, a lover, um, a friend. I definitely get a strong, I don't know, I definitely got a strong sort of friendship sense off these cards for some reason. Like, there was some sort of friend that you had that, um, you guys had a connection and then there was some sort of separation and now it could be that you guys are coming back into um connection again or maybe not or it's a situation where you have to just kind of realize what went wrong and heal that wound and have the separation be like finalized and complete so getting more specific into this let's start with the tarot cards that we have here so particularly with this one with the five of swords which with the swords we're talking about the air element so we're talking about an aquarius a gemini or a libra <laughs> and so that could mean that you have that placement or maybe the person that you were dealing with had that though that kind of zodiac sign or that kind of energy about them but we're really talking about communication with the swords our intellect how we think and so you know the five of swords is really about fighting about conflict you know there's winners there's losers it could be a case where somebody in this situation sacrificed too much of their integrity or were being too sort of in their own self-interest, not listening to maybe the other party, not seeing what was happening. And so this could be a situation that is still in the process of happening or was it maybe in the recent past or, you know, I'm, I don't feel like this is a situation that is coming up in the future. I feel like this is more of a, a more of a present and past situation that you guys have been dealing with. And really, it's about realizing that this has been happening, this conflict of interests, and you need to find now a better way of dealing with the conflict. And so, and gaining a clear perspective on what is happening, you know, where, what are these interests that are happening? Where is this miscommunication? I definitely got a big sense of miscommunication from this card. Another interesting thing that might be of importance to some watching this is that when I was looking at this card, I actually looked at the clock when it was saying 1111. So those numbers, that synchronicity of numbers may be of interest to some of you. So that's definitely what I was getting off this Five of Swords. And I definitely feel like it has a lot to do with maybe sort of the issue that is happening here. But before I get into that, let's sort of the uplifting part of this is definitely the sun. I definitely feel like you guys, you're going to be through this, you know, releasing and healing this issue this full moon. Um, you're going to be able to gain better enlightenment, understanding about the situation. Um you know, a, a new renewal for life, good health, because I definitely feel like for some of you, there's been this issue of, and it comes up with this patient's card, of c concern for your health. And so you definitely need to, this full moon, put some energy towards any sort of issue that you've been feeling you've been having with your health. And Put some put some time put some energy into that in trying to fix that issue whatever it may be maybe it could be just as simple as watching taking better care to watch what you're eating um whatever it feels applies to whoever's listening to this message keep that in mind and definitely so work on that have patience with it and then it you will come into good health if you put that effort into it because there's definitely this idea with a lot of these cards in that you need to have patience and you need to sort of put your energy out there to manifest what you want. But even though you put that energy out there, you can't just let it sit. You still need to put the work in for yourself to bring it about. Have those steps. Show the universe that you're really serious by already putting even just small steps towards that goal. So that's what I definitely got a sense that for some of you, it's this issue of health kind of question. You know, this is also the sun card is assurance. You know, clarity of vision. Again, we're getting you're gonna get some clarity of vision with this. 
having a very youthful sort of childlike joy about things, celebration, positivity, alignment with your true self. So coming into finding yourself again. And then, um, so moving on into some of the other cards that we have here. This one was really fascinating that I saw this come up. So with the blue moon, the unexpected, this card immediately jumped out to me because I feel like um, whatever the situation was, it happened pretty recently because we actually had a, a blue moon last month for the Scorpio full moon, which I have a video, I'll pick a card that happened for that full moon. It was also the flower moon. So I feel like something that happened during that time, during that full moon, is now coming to maybe an end, like the ending of a journey. Whatever that journey was, how hard it was is completely, you know, determined on who is reading this message. But, you know, the blue moon, this unexpected, really sort of talks about, you know, no matter how well you plan, there's always room for the unexpected to occur. Build your resilience as rare occurrences can happen. A visitor you have not seen in a long time may re-enter your life. So I feel like this happened probably last month. Somebody that could be like an old acquaintance, an old friend, whatever it may be, a lover of some sort. Because when I looked at this card, like more closely, I found it really interesting. Some things kind of stood out to me. And that was, of course, that, you know, we have two what seems to be women, one of which has this int uh, intricate sort of back tattoo. So maybe you yourself has a have a back tattoo or the person you were dealing with does. And uh, there's also a lantern down here. So I feel like, you know, whatever the situation is, it definitely involved you and another person. And so, you know, some other things to keep in mind with this card is, you know, the energy and power of the blue moon can be best taken advantage of by setting intentions on these moons of things that you really want to, but have never felt could happen. Refer to big, I refer to big wishes, the most miracle stuff you would be both delighted and surprised about if manifested. So after setting blue moon intentions, though, don't sit there hoping that it will just happen. Try to take clear practical steps towards these bigger, seemingly far away intentions and help the universe along. So yes, this card definitely has to do a lot about with, you know, bringing about your manifestations and be prepared that maybe it won't come about in the way that you expect. There was definitely something I think that happened last month for some of you that was unexpected. It may have caused, you know, some conflict because you, it wasn't what you were intending. It wasn't what you thought it was going to be. And again, I got that sense of maybe some sort of argument and miscommunication of some sort. And so it's time now, this is the time now to sort of heal that or end the journey. Um, the companion stone for this card that might be of interest for some of you is, hopefully I can say this right, Benotite? Benotite? Benonite? It's described as a very rare blue gem. So again, with the emphasis on the blue moon, blue gems, thinking about communication, your throat chakra. So something with your throat chakra happened. So maybe it might be of help for you this full moon to, you know, do some chakra work on your throat and sort of clear any blockages that might be there, or maybe it's sort of overactive. Moving on to the reaching for sunset that we have here. This specifically talked about you know, the journey's end. So you are approaching the last legs of a long and tiring journey, one that cannot end soon enough to suit you. You are definitely ready for some closure. Fear not, although this difficult situation has drawn on for so long, there really is an end in sight. Once the dust is, has cleared, take some time to reflect on what you have been through and make peace with your struggles before starting something else. Remember that when one door closes, another opens and you are definitely poised for a promising new beginning. Reach for that sunset and embra embrace the forthcoming dawn of the new day. So yes, again, with the whatever the situation is, I feel like you're going to have to make some sort of decision here about it, in a way it's no matter how, what decision you make it's going to be an ending of whatever happened in the past whether you decide to end whatever maybe this relationship was completely and do away with it leave it in the past or 
you're ending what that relationship once was and beginning anew with something, with gaining a clear, uh, a better clarity and aligning yourself better. Because I think this situation definitely starts with you. You need to come to a place where you are better aligned for yourself and that way you can be more willing to I think listen to the other party and maybe um see from maybe their perspective I don't know that's just like the kind of specific thing that I'm getting off this of course if you feel it resonates in a different way then <laughs> then that's how it resonates for you now with the patience card here you know it's messages that you must develop patience in all areas of your life patience does not mean that you give up on doing nothing you know, you, and do nothing. So yes, again, that emphasis on even though something is ending here or you're setting intentions for something to happen, you still have to put in the work and do it. And through that, you have to have the patience to trust, I think, in the universe that whatever it is that you want to manifest will come about because it definitely will since we have the sun card here. So you need to be aware of several aspects of the circumstances that you are facing. Patience requires you to stop pushing, rushing, and creating potentially explosive situations. Instead, it asks you to see the bigger picture and become aware of the ingredients that might be missing. If you're impatient with a particular person, instead give them space. So that could be maybe the issue here is that whatever you guys need to sort of, you might have been having some sort of you know, strained relationships with this conflict. And so both parties need to maybe take some time to, you know, again, better align themselves and find some peace in that sense. So avoid jumping to conclusions, making up dramatic stories about a person or a situation without being aware of all the details. You have an opportunity to let go of judgment. Always look for the truth of the situation, not what someone is saying or doing, but why. So the, the question of why are they doing this, again, that, that issue here about the interests, you know, the conflicting interests. What are the other parties true interest and why are they doing what they're doing you need to understand that and they also need to understand where you're coming from in that situation uh, patients can also be connected to a health condition you are recovering from from a new diet or an exercise program you have embarked on or a new course of study you may have begun so yes some of you may be beginning at this time some sort of new and i definitely feel like for you guys you should be starting some sort of new either area of study for yourself this full moon or just a new area for your health and begin that journey but definitely have patience with yourself because you're not going to magically change any sort of health issue or maybe you know change a weight goal overnight it doesn't work that way it takes time and dedication and a lot of patience so the action that because these cards in particular give you certain actions to actually take so this might be a good thing for you to practice and do for this full moon. So focus on one thing at a time. Say to yourself, I accept what is without what is without judgment. I'm willing to practice patience and presence. Breathe slowly and deeply while focusing on what is. Be aware of the air hitting your nostrils and lungs. Soften and relax. Be the explorer of the present moment. Discover what is magical, beautiful, and serene in this moment. If you're feeling unwell or stressed, just allow yourself to explore these feelings with the awareness that they will pass. So yes, there's definitely this sense that you guys, you know, being more mindful of both your body, your emotions, your mind, because you've had, you know, some rough some, uh, some sort of rough little situation here. It's not so like drastic as maybe getting like the tower card, like one of the major arcanas. Um, but it's a, it's a little bit of something. There, there's some something here, some sort of conflict. And so you guys just have to practice some mindfulness. Um, maybe some meditation would be helpful for you guys at, during this full moon. And just, again, take a breath and give give some space to the situation sort of come away from it and tr try to see from a different perspective in whatever it is because it will lead you to seeing sort of what is really going on the truth of the matter and have that new clarity and it might involve you know letting certain things end that need to end so yes 
that is what I see for you guys for this reading. If you enjoyed this reading, please do leave a like on this video, a comment letting me know what you thought about it, and yeah. Feel free to check out all of my various links down below. I will also have all the decks that I'm using in this video. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. All right, one. for those who picked the second group with the Rainbow Moonstone Pendulum, we're gonna go ahead and see what your cards are. So, we have the Ten of Swords. We also have the Seven of Swords. We've had a lot of sword energy in these readings so far. We also have the Seashell Princess, which is card 39. We also have card 15, Action, which is the Waxing Gibbous Six Moon. And then we have card number three, Dreams. So, overall, I feel like there's this sense with these cards of needing to come into a time now where you're really embracing your dreams, both figuratively and sort of literally, in the sense of the things that you secretly you've been wanting for yourself like dreams ambitions certain creative projects that maybe you've been wanting to do for so long now but you felt like you couldn't achieve them or do it now is the time to sort of take that action and go for it so starting off let's let's delve more into the tarot starting off with also interesting enough when i was looking at these cards I just looked at the clock when it said one, one, one. So that might be an important synchronicity kind of number for you. Interestingly, the first group also had a synchronicity kind of number that I saw when I was looking over their cards. So we got a theme going on here. So, you know, the angel number 111 might be interesting for you to look up. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into these some of these cards. So... With the Seven of Swords, I feel like, you know, this card is usually about some sort of deceit, betrayal, and you definitely have this kind of theme of betrayal in your card, so there might have been a situation, you know, in the past, the recent past, of some sort of betrayal that happened to you, and you're still holding on to that feeling. It could be related to, you know, this concept of dreams, of something you've been wanting to achieve, like, you know... Well, we'll get more into it with the orc cards, but I know one of them was talking about, you know, something kind of like a passion, like more like a creative passion that you, you know, probably secretly wanted to turn into something more serious, like a career for yourself, or just pursue in a more serious matter. And maybe, you know, with this card appearing, maybe people in your past have sort of put you down for wanting that maybe thinking it's silly or you can't do that and so part of what i feel like the seven of swords especially this one is sort of you've had to build up this mask sort of this persona that you had to put on to protect yourself in a sense from what others were saying about you you know other concept behind this the seven of swords is thief you know again that idea of like hiding behind a mask especially with this one trying to get away with something, escaping responsibilities, you know, having distrust, a very pessimistic view of the world, which I feel like, you know, it probably is coming from this situation with maybe other people, kind of like these, these blackbirds here, kind of bugging this figure that, you know, got away, thinks they got away with stealing this sword, and they're kind of like, oh, what do you got there? What do you have? Something kind of like that, like people kind of maybe questioning why it is that you want to do these certain things but in a very not positive way more in a negative sense you know you know this also has to talk about like trickery tactics strategy also neglecting some sort of issue which i feel like the issue that you're for you guys who maybe picked this group that have been neglecting is maybe this sort of finally going after your dreams um again that the idea of betrayal which is coming into with the ten of swords so with both of these being swords, we're really talking about your intellect, how you've been thinking, and how you communicate. So there's definitely this air of you're you're hiding a lot of yourself and what you really want to be saying, I think. You're trying to kind of sneak around people or issues because you don't want to face them head on. But I feel like with this Sagittarius full moon, especially when, you know, I feel like the emphasis on this full moon has to do with goals and 
kind of like dreams, what it is you want to do, you're going to have to come to this point where you're going to have to face it. And that's why the Ten of Swords is also here, because the Ten of Swords is all about an ending and not the most pretty of endings. And I don't want you guys to like be scared about this, because these are the minor suits. So it's not like, again, if you got the Death card or the Tower card in the Major Arcana, where that's like a big deal, it's a major life moment. These are some, the minors are more about the little things in life. So while it is a kind of in a sense a smaller issue it's still important it's still something that's been holding you back from really going after other things and so you know the ten of swords kind of you know a defeat in sense that idea of betrayal again things that you have to accept that certain things are out of your control and you can't always you can't always control the situation some things just are going to have to do what they're going to do. Some things are just unavoidable. There's an unavoidable situation here that you have to come to accept in order to move forward because while, you know, the Ten of Swords kind of have kind of has this kind of dark air about it, kind of like a scary thing about it when you see it, really the thing to remember with the Ten of Swords is even though it's like this kind of harsh cutting ending of something, it's also releasing you to begin something new for yourself so a new sense of independence which is something that could also you know represent the seven of swords kind of going solo doing your own thing and so i feel like through this process of finally tearing off that mask and accepting that you know you can't avoid these certain situations whatever the situation is anymore you have to stand up i think for yourself more not be sort of hiding in the shadows and it won't necessarily be a pleasant thing. This could have been a situation that has already happened or is a, you know, has happened in the recent past. And so it's just sort of, this is the final step of healing that issue, you know, really looking at it and realizing, you know, that is where I was, but now that's not where I am anymore. I'm a, now I'm coming into a new, a new person, I'm rebirthing. And so that leads us into the cards that we have here. So let's go ahead and start off with the Seashell Princess and what this card has to say. And so, yeah, <laughs> the Seashell Princess message is go after your heart's desire. There is a dream stirring in your heart that needs attention. You have felt drawn to follow and nurture it, but you are having trouble letting go of practical considerations. You know, that's very a sword-like issue. That's your intellect. That's like the logical you know, sense of maybe how you should do something, but you know, this is a little bit more of the realms of maybe like the wands or the cups. You're more emotional, you're more passionate, driven side. So anyway, um, you're letting go of practical consideration and diving into the unknown. Know, however, that while many people reach for the stars, only the passionate actually climb up and grab them. Look inside yourself and rediscover the dream that has been buried under the trappings of day-to-day -day considerations and obligations. Reimagine the ideal life you longed for in years past and write down the details. Put it down on paper and make a commitment to your younger self to strive and dream once again. So yes, it's definitely this is talking about needing to reconnect with your younger self, maybe a younger self that again kind of got buried under, you know, the kind of rougher things in life and you've kind of, a, in a sense, abandoned it or kind of like hidden it away. And so now it's time to bring it back out and embrace those dreams. And interestingly enough, this isn't the only card that you have right here that brings up this concept of writing. And so journaling might be a very important thing, or maybe something to do with your dream has to, like these dreams, this ambition that you secretly had, this passion has to do with writing in some way. So let's actually go on to the dreams card, because I think that's where that is mentioned. So with the dreams card, it says, pay attention to your dreams. They hold lots of significant insights for you at present. Your dreams may provide you with important details about your current health issues or a creative idea you need to, you need action to make your desires manifest. Dreams can also give you clues about what is challenging you emotionally. 
Sometimes your loved ones who have passed over or people you have lost touch with connect to you while you sleep and offer valuable messages that can give you peace of mind or the strength to persist through a challenging situation. Take note of both the dark and the light aspects of your dreams. In particular, pay attention to any reoccurring dreams as they often have significant meaning or wisdom that can help you. So yes, that's definitely a big theme here. These cards, this um, Oracle deck, also has specific actions to take. So for this full moon, a good action for you to take is, before you go to sleep, place a glass of water next to your bed. Position this card, or well, if you have these cards, um, over the water with the, an intention to remember your dreams. If you do not have those cards, maybe simply just writing down a, a, the, like the actual words of intention to remember your dreams over that glass of water would probably suffice. Um, let the card energize the water or just the intention of the words. You could also place stones around it. Like if you have any crystals that are specifically good for dreaming, dream work. And, you know, then take a few sips of the water. Relax and think about a question you would like answered. You can write your question in a notebook or repeat the question to yourself as you drift off to sleep. In the morning, drink some wa um, water from the glass and write down everything you can remember from your dreams. Be particularly aware of the feeling associated with a specific sense in your dream. Uh, excuse me, a specific scene in your dream, but also I would think about senses. Um, it can reveal a great deal about how you unconsciously feel about yourself and the people in your life. So yes, so when I post this video, it will definitely be a couple days before the full moon. So I would definitely recommend beginning this process as soon as you possibly can. Get any kind of notebook that you have just laying around or just maybe even pieces of paper to begin or use your phone, like the notes. Definitely do this process of dreams because... It will, I think it will definitely highlight a lot of these sort of, you know, buried, you know, issues or feelings that you've maybe pushed away for so long and now it, or, you know, get better clarity about that sort of situation. As well as, again, going back to that idea of some sort of creative project, some that dream, that passion that you have, your dreams might be a great way to find inspiration for that. I definitely know that I find a lot of inspiration from my dreams for different art projects or stories or whatever it is. Um, you can definitely find a lot of inspiration from that, as well as just understanding subconsciously what you've been feeling, but maybe are having a very really hard time expressing. Uh, again, this is another group similar to the last group. Maybe this time also, you know, we're working on dr dreams. So definitely think about your crown, your eye, your third eye chakra, as well as I think your throat chakra would be a helpful thing to work on since we're dealing with sword energy, we're dealing with throat, we're dealing with communication. So moving on to our last oracle card here, we have the Wax and Gibbous Six, which is saying action. So this is definitely the the other thing that you guys definitely should do. So the time has come to take action. Let go of your paral paralysis. Let go of your burdens step by step. I am responsive and ready to take action. Sometimes we are afraid to move forward. This is natural. Change can be difficult. And if we have been hurt or have failed before, we are anxious about what may happen. If we uh, instigate change, maybe we think, you know, it's easier and safer just to tread some water for a while instead of taking a joyful action towards the things we truly desire, such as writing a book, undertaking study, accepting a new job, or seeking a better relationship. We bulk, we freeze, we do not take the steps we could. And so we remain stagnant, we don't grow. The moon phase encourages us to embrace action. Action is part of our humanity. We are not made to hide and refuse and refuse to blossom. So, yeah, again, it's that emphasis on, you know, going after whatever it is that you want for your life. That's, again, the idea of a passion, a new job, just a, a certain change. There's definitely this idea of change happening here for you guys. And no matter what, whether you're trying to avoid it or whatever the deal may be, it's going to happen whether you want to or not. The change is going to happen and you need to embrace that action embrace that change that is coming for you the other thing the companion stone for this card is actually rhodonite so 
I have this piece of stone, which is a rhodochrosite, which is very similar to rhodonite. It may possibly be a rhodonite. I'm not 100% sure. They look very similar stones, uh, but the rhodonite might be an interesting stone for you to use, obviously, for this process. Also, the rhodochrosite that I have right here might be another useful one. And also, this is an, a stone that is really good that I've found personally for dreams. It enhances your dreams, I've found personally. I've also combined this stone with, um, let's have I say this, uh, prenhite with epodite pieces inside of it. These two I've combined and it's definitely helped me with sort of dream issues as well as enhancing sort of the dream states that I have. So those might be interesting stones as well as just researching the rhodonite. As far as the waxing gibbous, um, I'm not sure if that has happened yet as of the point that I'm filming this video, but this is obviously a very important moon cycle specifically for you guys. So definitely mark it down on your calendar when the waxing gibbous happens, for how long, as well as obviously this full moon. So yes, I definitely feel like for you guys, it is all about coming to terms with what it is you've been really feeling and thinking about and going after what it is you truly desire, what your dreams are and sort of healing maybe, you know, any sort of past hurts that have to do with trying to go after what it is you really want from what other people have said to you and really coming to this point where you need to be willing to accept the change that is happening now because you definitely, I feel like you guys are changing and if you do this dream practice, it will help to show you exactly how that is and it's going to bring up things from the past, I think, those unhealed sort of hurts that you now need to take responsibility for yourself so that you can continue going forward and embracing what it is that you're dreaming and taking that action. So yes, I hope this video, this reading resonated for you guys. Um, if you did like this reading, do leave a like underneath this video as well as a comment if you want to let me know what you think. You know, subscribe if you feel so inclined. And yeah, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one. Alright guys, for those who picked group three with this little wolf moon pennant, let's go ahead and check out what your messages are. So, for the tarot, we have the Ace of Swords, and as I've said with pretty much all the other groups, the swords have appeared for all of them, so definitely sort of the collective overall thing with a lot of these messages has to do with the element of the sword, so intellect and communication. We also got uh, temperance. So then we also have the sea mermaid with pink lotus in reverse. We also have a couple extra little messages for you. So we also have last quarter moon gratitude card 23, and we also have peace waning crescent um, five which is card 28. This is card number one. And then the final one we have is number 12, Victim Consciousness. So definitely overall, um, this is definitely the major issue, I feel like, for you guys who picked this group. This is sort of a main thing that we're going to talk about that I feel is sort of your challenge, what you need to heal from, and it's kind of affecting the rest of this group here. Um... An interesting thing, when I was pulling the cards for your group number three, I did get this sort of kind of like lightheaded, kind of like this dizzy, this just very kind of overwhelming energy. I'm not sure exactly how to explain it, if it was sort of nervousness or just kind of like feeling busy or it was, it was very strange. It was very much unlike the other groups. And I feel like it definitely had something to do with this sort of victim consciousness. But before we get into that, I'm going to talk about the tarot cards that we pulled for you guys. And so, as I said, we have, again, another swords card coming up and this time it's the ace of swords so for you guys this is all about a new beginning of sorts so definitely be using this time of this full moon to begin something anew and the thing to remember with the ace of swords though is that it is a double-edged blade and so you really need to be very wise and pay a lot of attention to how you're using your sword of this new beginning because you could be using it for good or you can kind of be using it for bad and so you really need to make sure that you're using it from a place coming from a lot of love and light peace gratitude 
And so, some other things to think about with the Ace of Swords is that, you know, is truth. Really coming into this time of a new beginning where a lot of truths will be revealed, slicing through sort of the bull and finding the truth underneath everything, having a breakthrough, clarity, a sharp mind, a new point of view, kind of a new perspective you're going to be seeing things. Uh, best time to work on goals. So that matches up really perfectly with what I felt like this Sagittarius moon is going to be about. So you're definitely going to be using this period. I think you can use this period to really work on starting something new here. And then with temperance, you know, this is all about the middle path. And I definitely feel this is a very overall energy for a lot of the other cards here. And so have patience you know, having a lot of balance. This is all about needing to balance things out, both your inner and outer selves, you know, testing new waters before you really jump into anything. So that goes along with this Ace of Swords, you know, knowing how you're going to wield it right by testing it out, having a clearer vision. So a lot of having to do with gaining a new clarity, which I think is also definitely related to this peace card that we have up here, you know, working in harmony with others now at this time. Also, you know, re-examining your priorities, making sure, which I definitely feel is important when you're having this new beginning, really looking internally in your mind and looking at what pro uh, priorities you've set for yourself and making sure that you've selected the best ones for you and examining that. So that's, this is all good. I definitely feel like this is a lot of good stuff. The thing that I think you guys have to work on a lot is definitely involved with this victim consciousness, which is something I think you guys have dealt with in the past and the recent present. And so this full moon is now a time for you to rebalance yourself. So specifically this card, the victim consciousness card 12 or three, um, is telling, you know, stop blaming others and take responsibility for what you are creating. It's easy to think that life is unfair and point a finger at others. If you hear yourself saying, life is unfair, bad things always happen to me, I'm not good enough, nobody cares about me, why me, I can't do what I want to do, etc., then you are losing your power. Nourishing your victim aspect and uh, ascertaining your place in the victim club. Your inner victim can stop you from moving forward by creating dramas, making you judge others, telling you that you don't deserve better, and keeping you stuck in a financial rut. You need to build your internal confidence, self-worth, and courage. Get out of your comfort zone and work on expanding and growing in all areas of your life. The light side of the victim archetype is the victorious part which can help you to hold your power without getting angry and attacking others. It can also assist you in creating healthy boundaries and act from a place of honesty, integrity, and compassion and love. So yes, you know, the action that this card talks about to take, and I definitely feel like you guys should work on this during this full moon, is visualize your inner victim. Ask to be aware when you are acting like a victim. Then ask your inner victim to show you how you could behave in a more empowered way. How do you need to think, feel, and act to be empowered? On a daily basis, ask yourself, am I acting from an empowered, victorious perspective or a victim perspective? So yes, I feel like for you guys, it's... This is something that you've been dealing with. And, you know, we all kind of go through points in time where this is happening. This is kind of, I feel like, your kind of dark night of the soul situation. And so, you know, with these other cards coming up here, especially Temperance and the Ace of Wands, this is letting, this is telling me that you guys really need to come back into balance with yourself because I feel like this is saying that you're you're pretty out of balance with your mind, with your emotions, and so you need to become more proactive and more aware of it and because there's there's a new beginning here and again, you have to be wary because with the ace of swords it's that double edged blade, so you can't start this new beginning from a place of this. So you have to make sure that you're making you're, again, reevaluating your priorities, making sure that you're doing everything in a balance. You can't completely remove all of this kind of aspect of yourself, but 
because it, it's a part of everything. You know, it's the shadow kind of, it's uh, a shadow side, I feel like, for a good group of you. And so you can't remove it because in the process, you're going to be removing your light out attributes as well. You have to have a balance between the two. And while they seem like they don't mix, in a lot of ways they do. So like this card was saying, you know, there are light attributes to the victim archetype. And that's the victorious part, really being empowered. This is all about reminding you that you can empower yourself. You need to um, take back your self-worth and really, you know, view things from a more positive place. It's again, I think... Was it with these cards or with a different group? Something about, you know, seeing from a pessimistic view. So now is the time for you to get a new viewpoint, to really see things from a new light and a new situation. So with that said, let's go ahead and look into some of the other cards that we have here. Let's go ahead and talk about, you know, the mermaid with the lotus. So this card in its reverse form. So I'm not usually a... I have mixed feelings about reading the tarot in reverse, but certain oracle decks do have reverse meanings already put into them, and so I do honor that when I have an oracle deck that is dealing with reversals, because they do have important messages, I feel like. And so with this card in reverse, it has a very kind of cut and dry message for you guys, and that is time to get back to work. You have been investing a lot of time and resources on your health and well-being these days. It's been most helpful, but now you're ready to rejoin the world. Wake up and get movies. So I definitely feel like that could be part of this situation. So maybe for some of you, it's to a point now where you've recognized this in yourself. Maybe the new moon that we had in Gemini has helped you realize this or whatever it may be. You, you realize that you maybe have been dealing with this mentality, you're recognizing it now, and so you've been working on your health in this sense, and so you've been taking a lot of time, you've been kind of meditating and doing maybe this work that we're gonna be talking about next, and so this is just a card to remind you that you can, you can get going and you can start pursuing things. You, because you're aware of it and you've been acting on it and you've been working on healing this portion, you can move forward. Now, on the other hand, for some of you, it could be that you're just now hearing about this, you're just now realizing this, and so this is just a, I feel like this could be a reminder for you guys to keep working on this, start working on this, and through that, you'll be able to sort of find, again, the balance again, and you can get back to work in the things that you really want to do. Now, moving on to the next few cards that we have here. So, with the Waning Crescent 5 and then the last quarter moon, let's go ahead and talk about what these are talking about. So, for the first one, you know, the last quarter moon, gratitude. So, both of these, I feel like, are things that are going to help you guys to work on, especially in regards to this. So, with the gratitude, it's saying, be where you are and be thankful. There is always something to be grateful for, no matter your suffering. Gratitude raises a lower vibration to a higher one. Do not allow yourself to be surrounded by too many negative people. Life is cons uh, conspiring for you. I joyfully turn my attention to what I am grateful for. As we enter the last quarter moon on the lunar cycle, the energies begin to turn towards surrender and release, to let go of what we no longer need. It behoves us to pay attention to what we have right now, both positive and negative. This attention, um, paying and focus allows us to wisely discern and to be grateful for all of it. Yes, all of it. Because the nasty stuff, the stuff that is making us suffer right now has already happened and we can take wisdom from this. However, now is going, um, Waxing Crescent 4 and the Dark Moon are going to sort that for you. And what we have left is the good stuff. And frankly, most of it is going to be great. Taking some time out on this moon to list a few things you are grateful for will raise your vibrations and banish any resistance you have to ditching old outmoded patterns. Doing this also turns your powerful focus away from a story you may have started to believe of everything going wrong or that life does terrible things Sorry to you. Sorry about that. My video cut out for a second there. But as I was saying, I think, what was I reading? Um, yeah, so 
Doing this also turns your powerful focus away from a story you may have started to believe of everything going wrong or that life does terrible things to you. Gratitude is a balancer. In fact, it normally tips the scales to the positive. So yes, I obviously there is some sort of issue that has happened or that you've dealt with quite a bit of this sort of mentality of thinking that like the world is kind of out to get you in a sense or that nothing ever seems to go right and you know what it's a perfectly kind of nat almost in a way a natural thing to think because sometimes we can't us as humans can't help but think that sometimes when things just kind of naturally keep going wrong but a way to think about it if things are kind of they feel like they're constantly going wrong it's for a reason it's either to show you that whatever sort of behavior or thing that you are doing that constantly leads to that thing is no longer right for you and so it's time to remove it it's i think a signal that things are you as a person are changing and growing and the old way of maybe doing something is no longer appropriate for you so you need to start a new beginning in a sense and so coming from this place of gratitude and really being thankful for the things that you truly do help helps to switch again as it says your vibration to something more positive and helps you to kind of clear away with this sort of thinking on that same note before i forget <laughs> this card oops also has suggests some different stones this whole deck does of different stones that might be useful for you and to use and so for the gratitude card it suggests ocean jasper so i have you know these are two examples of ocean jasper they come in all different kinds of different patterns and colors and stuff it's a really awesome stone it definitely you know combines a lot of different elements together so it is a really good one again going back to that idea of balance the temperance card so that's a really good stone to use for that and to use for this full moon while you work on this process and so the last card we have to talk about here is peace so i definitely feel like this is something along with temperance you guys are coming into now so the peace card says peace of mind is one of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves refuse drama and do not freely engage with people who use drama as a weapon so on that note you know it could be possibly that you've been dealing with people who draw out this drama and kind of force you into this sort of mentality this mindset because they're so negative and so I feel like the message there for some of you, if it is that case and you have been dealing with people that are kind of pushing you constantly into this sort of mentality, um, you can't sort of come back at them in a negative way, but more of a place of coming to accept that maybe you can't change them. They're going to keep doing that. They're going to keep believing in that. So you just have to sort of like, okay, you know... That is the way that you're going to be, but I know that I need to change and that it's not right for me. And so I'm just going to let you be and please do the same to me in return. So sort of kind of coming from that place of both this peace and that gratitude, you know, be kind of in a way grateful because they're showing you that is a person that is doing that to you, uh, making you feel this way. Be grateful because you realize that you can be so much stronger than them in a sense because they constantly need to sort of use that to make themselves feel better but you know that you can choose a better path for yourself and so be grateful that they have kind of shown you that you can find a better way a way out of the darkness in a sense so anyway um back to this card stop fighting allow yourself to rest for a while when you, again, the idea of like, you're, you're going to take a time to rest and then you're going to be able to get back to work. So obviously this rest period is not going to last forever. Um, when we let what we no longer need go, we make room for peace. I choose to create and hold peace. I allow this to ripple and into the world. You know, we are an anxious bunch, us modern folk. We are constantly stimulated or not stimulated enough. We find it hard to sleep. Insomnia is a record levels in the Western world. And for some, we self-medicate with food, devices, drama, and work. We seek peace, but we don't know how to go about it particularly well. Peace can begin in a sense of decisions we make. For example, we can decide we can't control everything. Shock. The ancient Greek uh, Stoics 
had a great strategy here. Advising a split of your issues into I can control this and I have no control over this. Again, going back to the idea of temperance here. Think about the most pressing and worrying issues you have right now or the situations that are giving you the most sleepless nights, then break them down into pieces and place them under the correct heading. Be honest and discerning. What you find is the most of your situations or issues are under the second heading. The Sto uh, Stoics advise that the things listed there deserve no more of your attention because they are actually out of your control. Wow. However, the things under I can control this are important and you must uh, action these to the best of your ability. These are the things you will influence and where you will glean the most change. While this seems a simple system, I promise you it will give you a far, le far less worry about an instantly more peace. You can be more focused and mindful about what you are doing in real time. We can place ourselves deliberately in sessions in quite beautiful and peaceful environments. We can learn that for us, uh, for us brings our body rest and peace. We can choose to not do the head miles of worry. Worry is after all chewing gum for the mind. Not really nutritious in any way, but something to do. When we let go of what we no longer really need, peace floods in and takes up the old space and healing it. Wow, that's a pretty crazy message right there. And again, it goes back to this. I feel like in, it kind of goes back to that feeling I got when I first shuffled your guys' card of sort of this, I don't know, kind of buzzing, kind of anxious, lightheaded energy. I feel like you guys may be under a lot of stress or you have been under a lot of stress. And so it's time to... Take a moment to rest, breathe, you know, do some grateful gratitude sort of meditations or journaling work, you know, find your inner peace, find your balance so that you can are able to start this new beginning and get back to the work you really want to do. And so for this peace card, the companion um, stone that it suggests is actually amethyst, you know. This little guy and this geode I have right here, they're both amethysts. Amethyst is just overall a really great stone for, stone for pretty much everything and anything you can think of. Um, it's good for dreaming, it's good for stress, it's good for magic. I mean, it is an all around one of the best stones to use, I feel like. It always comes up on almost any list I look up for anything. So yes, I definitely feel like for you guys, it is this issue of you needing to heal from some sort of kind of crazy stress that has been making you feel pretty out of control, out of balance. And so you just need to come back in and align yourself, especially with this full moon. Really think about these moon cycles, you know, the last quarter moon, the new moon, the full moon, the waning crescent. I mean, all of these are just, I definitely feel like you guys the moon cycles are very important for you because it's going to help you gain back some balance. So yes, that is the reading that I see for you guys. I hope that this resonated for some of you. And if it did, please do leave a like on this video. You know, leave me a comment if you want to. And subscribe if you want to see more. So yes, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.